uh, as I said uh, several times, uh, you need to have the GitHub desktop app installed and you need to have a, an account on github.com and, and we're gonna work in pairs. Uh, so I would ask you to everybody to pair up with somebody uh, and, and, and basically it, see, see what, what, what your uh, colleague is doing. Um, so we're, we're, I'm gonna go a, at a very, very slow pace. I want everybody to be on the same page with me. So um, uh, once we, we're gonna do like something like 20 minutes of what's the, so like the theory behind a version control. But once we get into the, into the hands-on, I'm gonna be stopping a lot and, and everybody's gonna work with, with each other to try to move, move everybody forward, okay? Um, Okay, so the, the motivation for, for why learn these tools and others, uh, the main goal is to, to um, uh, become familiar with tools that can help us increase the computational reproducibility of our work. Um, this is uh, an often cited uh, principle. It's from a, from a quote from a researcher in, the, in the, uh, some of the physical sciences. I, I don't know which one is it, but if, Clarible principle that basically he says, stop thinking about um, uh, an article about the scholarship, and the scholar, the scholarly output, uh, and, out, and, uh, and an article, it's advertisement of that output. The output is the entire computational environment that produce the, the evidence that you see in the, in, the, in, the, in the article. So this is my mimified version of the Clarible principle, which is the, we need to focus on the entire iceberg and not only on the, on the tip of it. Um, so Git and GitHub are uh, tools for version control. Um, uh, version control software, it's an increasingly popular tool for computational reproducibility. Uh, Git is a type of version control software. Uh, GitHub, it's a company that it's built on top of this software, okay? Um, they are, Git and GitHub are popular among programmers, but not so much among, among non-programmers. And by, by non-programmers, I mean, uh, people who, who's, uh, a programmer here would be somebody whose main job is to write code. Uh, I, in, the, in the researcher world, I see that the main, res the main job of the researchers is to do research. Uh, the, the, the coding is uh, instrumental for it. So mo most researchers fall in the non-programmer non -programmer category. Um, and Git and GitHub have been uh, for a while pretty unpopular among non-programmers. And I think it has to do with uh, graphical user interfaces, GUIs. Uh, a graphical user interface for us non-programmers, it's essentially almost every software uh, in a sense that uh, uh, when, 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 when we interact with software, we move the mouse, we type things, and we, we see how the software reacts. That's the graphical user interface. Not every software has a graphical user interface. Git. It's not built on a graphical user interface. It's built on the command line. Uh, and its entire functionality is meant to be used in the command line. Um, uh, but uh, the good news is, is about like 90% of the features that we need from Git and from uh, version control can be accessed using a, a graphical user interface. They, they are, GUIs are, are somewhat unpopular among programmers, uh, but they are extremely popular among the rest of the world uh, because they are, but it's behind the, the popularization of the personal computers. So before, before there was any type of interactions with spreadsheets or, or Word docs and stuff like that, everything had to be typed in the command line. I and mean, there was a big barrier to, to access this, this, this type of technologies. Um, so today we're gonna, this, this will be so like the command line shell, the terminal bash, whatever it is. And, and People tend to be terrified when they are so like ex, uh, exposed to this. I, I get terrified when I am exposed to this. Uh, so Git was designed to run in the command line, uh, but as I said, 90% or, or more of the features that we need right now, now we can access them without the command line. So that, that's the goal today to learn how to use uh, Git without the command line. Um, and what is Git? What is this software? It's a software that is designed to track the entire history of, of a code of a project. Um, it is designed originally for software development, um, the, the, but now it's gaining more and more traction among the research community. The main appeal is it, it facilitates a full reproducibility and collaboration. Um, 
Uh, and as I said, the, the, even though it's designed to run on the command line, mo most of the features can be accessed through graphical user interfaces. Um, by code, what, so what Git does is that it tracks the entire history of code. What do I mean by code? Code's gonna be any type of plain text file uh, that it's, that's called human readable, and this could be a .r, .do, .tech, .md, um, even .csv, but we're not gonna be focusing on databases, we're focusing on, on code here. Uh, and by human readable, I mean that what you see in the, in the, in the, in the script or in the, in the file is what the machine sees also. So a non-human readable file would be a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet, a, dot, a PDF, a .x a, a file. What you're seeing is, it's, and, and what the machine is reading are different things, okay? And, and what, what we are gonna understand by code is gonna be all these files that, that are plain, that, are, uh, that what you see is what you get. Uh, these are called, the, the, the latter, the non-human readables are called binary files. They can be tracked using Git, but you're not gonna be able to see the difference. Uh, so that, that's the, you can see, so like the history that there has been changes uh, done uh, to, a, to a file, but you, you, are, you have not seen the, the changes in, in the difference within a file, okay? Um, so what is GitHub? GitHub, as I said, it's a company that for our purposes, it provides two services. The one service, the one first service is a web hosting service that's gonna store our work uh, in a way that we are gonna be able to track what's going on. And the second service for our purposes is that it provides a software, uh, a graphical user interface that allows us to interact with Git in our computer, okay? Uh, this is not an advertisement for uh, Git, the web hosting service or the, the graphical user interface. So there are other, uh, uh, so in terms of uh, other hosting services, there's Bitbucket, GitLab, Gitkraken, etc. Other graphical user interfaces, there's Source Tree, Gitkraken, RStudio, and, and, other, and other things, okay? So the, the, the whole point is to, to give you an idea of how to use the Git in your computer and how to interact with a web hosting service. That's, that's, that's all we're trying to do here, okay? Okay, so the potential of, the, the, the goal of this um, uh, workshop that we have, let me put the, sorry about that. Um, we have uh, 80 minutes, yeah. What, what time, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the goal of this, of this uh, uh, workshop is to keep track of any potentially meaningful modification of your code. That, that's the goal that we're gonna try to get out of here, out of this uh, session. Uh, uh, a secondary goal, if we have time, we're gonna go through demos and the, the, the latter demos are, the, the latter demos are gonna be more focused on, on collaboration. We're gonna try to learn how to collaborate with others using GitHub. But the main goal is, is uh, to learn how to keep uh, any potentially meaningful modification of your code. Uh, as a bonus track, maybe try to get you excited with some open source statistical software, but that's just a maybe. So let, let's go back to the goal, right? First goal, we wanna keep track of any potentially meaningful modification of our code. What do we mean by potentially meaningful modification? That, that's, that, that, that would be so like the first part. And let's, let's think of how would we address this problem if we do not have version control software, okay? You don't know what version control software is, you still wanna keep track of what's going on with your code. What can you do? What would be a, a reasonable strategy? you can have something like this. Strategy one would be, okay, me and my team, we're gonna uh, agree that whenever somebody modifies the code, we're gonna rename it using some type of convention. So um, either by the end of the day, either by the end of the week, or at some milestone when there's some type of meaningful modification, uh, we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna rename this uh, script uh, and let's use this convention. So type year, month, date, file name, and the initials of the person who modified. That's a version control strategy, okay? That, that's a valid strategy, that it's, uh, it's something um, that can help to make your work a little bit more reproducible. Uh, so this would be an example. You begin working from the last saved version, so open up this file. Then at the end of the whatever session, day, week, whatever, we're gonna modify it with a new date and, and the initials. Um, what are, what are the benefits of this? It is uh, fairly straightforward to adopt. Um, 
and it's uh, the, the problems are is that there are uh, it's very easy to make mistakes very easy very easy to overwrite a file uh, it's hard to document so what happened between this file and this file there's nothing evident in the in the way in, in what I did that that explains what happened between one file and the other and also an, uh, an, a nuisance is at the end of the day you end up having a, a ton of files for one uh, document strategy to do is to use a version control software uh, what are we going to do we're going to start with one file called file name um, and we're going to take a snapshot here i'm going to be very ambiguous about this idea of taking a snapshot of our working environment uh, of our working folder okay so we're going to just take a snapshot of my of my um, entire working folder uh, and then i'm going to change things and then I'm going to change them again, and then I'm going to take another snapshot. And then at the end of the day, I'm going to upload all my work back to a server, being on, 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 the, on the internet or an internal server. Um, I'm not defining yet what a snapshot is. It will become um, clear in, in, a, in a second. Uh, but but the, this is the idea of version control software. Um, you work. You save as you, you you have saved all your life, but you add a few steps. Uh, the, the 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 most strange step is this step of um, taking snapshots. Uh, and once you are done taking snapshots, you also add another weird step, which is so like send things away from your computer. You stop thinking about your computer as sort of like the the center of your work, and you you, need, you start thinking of a server as the container of all your work, and your computer is a machine on which that day you happen to access that that work. Okay, um, so the the benefits is that there's no way that you can delete a file. Uh, um, the documentation it's uh, incorporated into this process. You end up with one file per document. Uh, it's easy to see the differences between one between one snapshot and the other snapshot, uh, and I'll show you how that works. Uh, and it's meant to work in the cloud or with a server. Um, the, the 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 problems is that it it has these barriers. It has these these additional steps into our workflow that we have learned to do for decades now, and and, and it adds basically it's it's almost the way I think about it. Is it almost asks you to tie your shoes in a different way, which is like. It's it's fairly straightforward, but it's you, we're so used to doing this that that it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit of a barrier. And we're gonna work through these essentially three new steps uh, to to and I'll, I'll identify them and I'll help you sort of like lower the barriers of entry block. Ju Julia, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. So the, this this is similar to it, uh, uh, but the the issue with version control software on 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 Dropbox is that it is somewhat harder to uh, navigate, especially if you're working with code, to navigate what are the differences that you've been doing on code, and also it's somewhat easier to make mistakes on this um, any type of automatic syncing uh, system because it will automatically sort of like overwrite what what has happened before. This is this this uh, 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 git using git uh, adds these these three weird steps that we're going to be reviewing that that you they're never going to happen automatically you need to make them consciously such that you are aware of what's going on uh, so it is it has definitely similarities with with dropbox uh, and and dropbox it's also another good uh, tool for keeping uh, track of what what's going on um, You move from snapshot to snapshot, and we'll we'll see uh, uh, what 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 that means. Okay. So, and, and this is sort of like the, the the comic book of the situation that we're trying to avoid. Everybody writes a file that is called final .doc, but then they, there's a revision, final dot revise, final triple revise, four times revise, and then you you end up with these gigantic files. Um, so that that's sort of like the the, the comical version. The 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 one. Uh, warning before we dive into sort of like the, the machinery of, of version control is that having a, a well-organized version con version control version uh, versioning strategy like renaming things in an organized way i think it's a valid approach i think it's a good a good approach 
And the, remember, uh, your main goal is to do research, to learn about a specific area, and to basically become an expert in that in that area. Uh, this is a tool that is meant to help you with this. This, this, is, this is a tool that should not add anxieties that if you don't learn version control software, it's not that you are uh, like falling outside of a circle, uh, uh, of a community or anything like that. Your community is that of research. And, and we, uh, uh, at the research transparency world, we're becoming a little bit more aware of this term called broken science that is basically uh, like bringing just the last shiny new tool that says this is going to make everything more transparent and more reproducible, but at the same time, it does create some barriers and create some, some tribes in a sense. And this is just a tool that is meant to help improve your work on the margin. It should not terrify you and, and make you run away, okay? So uh, with that caveat, let, let's just jump into this. So these are, these are the two versions, the two strategies that I've been talking about, right? So up, up here, I have the, what, I, what I describe as strategy one, that you start, start with one sample the sample file, you save, then you save again, and, the, and in the step three, this could be a potentially meaningful modification. You, you think that maybe you're, I don't, I don't know, adding something important that you wanna go back later on, so you're gonna rename it with the date and the initials, and then move forward, and then when you move to step six, you're gonna, you're gonna have the same suspicion, and you're gonna rename and get the, 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 the third file. At the end of the day, you're going to have uh, three files. You're going to have doc basically, you're going to have a history that you can document two steps, step four and step six. And, and it's going to be very hard to search, right? It's very hard to know where was that I added those new set of controls or where I changed the way I'm excluding my, uh, my, my observations. Uh, was it in this file? Was it in that file? It is, it is hard to remember, right? Uh, this is the this is the new uh, approach. It's going to have three weird steps, and, and uh, what, people want to emphasize that the, the first weird step is that you're you're not going to start working right away. You're going to pull from the server consciously. You're going to say, "Hey, I'm going to start working, so I'm going to pull the latest version that is out there in the in the server." Then you're going to start working as normal. Okay. Then you're going to save, and then when you when you're going to save again, you say. Okay, maybe now I want to take a snapshot of my working folder. A working folder, instead of saying working folder, which is a long thing, we're going to say repository, and then I'm going to restrict the working in the repository. I'm going to say repo. Repo is just a slang uh, term for a glorified folder that contains your entire project. Um, the, the, the main uh, uh, important thing that I think it's uh, uh, relevant to mention is that um, at least the way I started working uh, when, when analyzing data and, and using code, uh, I used to make the, this mistake where I would put my data, all my data in a big data folder for different projects, and all my, my code in a code project for my, all my different projects, and, and I would not have a master working uh, project folder per project. And I, I think that, that that's an important uh, um, benefit of, of thinking of a working uh, folder project for the entire project that contains everything um, because it makes it more portable, right? So instead of thinking of like sending it to different parts in your computer, think of one folder for the entire project. And in that folder, you repeat the, the files, the, the folders, code, data, and, and uh, you have a, a well-organized uh, folder structure. And actually there are, there's really good tips out there. There's a um, group called the tier group, T-I-E-R, that provides some protocols of how to organize your folders. I would strongly recommend people to check that out. Uh, but but um, yeah, so you, you're gonna have one uh, working folder that is gonna be your repository or your repo, and you're gonna take a snapshot of the entire working folder. Here, you're taking a snapshot of this file that you have changed, but, you have, if, but if you change other files, you're also gonna have, uh, uh, take a snapshot of all those other files, okay? And then you're gonna take another snapshot, and then you're gonna take another snapshot, and another snapshot, and another snapshot. And at the end of the day, or at the end of the working session, you're gonna say, okay, I'm done. I'm gonna push my work back to a server. I'm gonna check in. Uh, the, the terminology the terminologies you check out or pull, or you check in or push, okay? And, and this snapshot is the action of basically saying, okay, everything that I have modified until now, 
I want version control to be aware of. That, that's it, okay? Uh, what are the benefits is that your history is gonna have all the steps where you took the snapshot, where you did the commit. Uh, it's gonna have one file and the, it's gonna be very easy to search across all these steps because every time that you take the snapshot, you're gonna leave a little message. A, you're gonna leave a, li a little message with the differences and B, you're gonna be able to see the differences between a, any a snapshot of choice, okay? Um, other reasons to use Git is a, a great, way, great way to access a, a whole world of knowledge. It's a great tool for collaboration and it's also great to test all sorts of ideas. Um, we're, we, we're gonna dive a little bit into this, but remember the main goal for us to keep track of any potential meaningful modification in our code, okay? Um, so for that, that, that was the entire uh, theory of this. Um, and any, any questions, uh, uh, conceptual questions of what, what, what I've discussed so far? Yeah, yeah. I mean, th th that that's that. Uh, so committing is instantaneous. Pushing you basically, you are syncing with the server, and committing is something that's local. You're you're doing it with your machine. You're not having any actions with the with the server. When you push, you you basically send stuff back to the to the the, the server. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you might not have access to the internet. Um, uh, you might not wanna. Uh, Pushing it's a little bit more consequential, uh, so um, yeah. Any questions? Okay. Um, okay. So first of all, the, the and as I said, we're gonna, we're gonna. I have these four demos. We have sixty minutes, so probably we'll cover two of the two of these. But the first one is the one that I care the most. The first one I will go very very slow, and I want everybody to be on the same page with with this. Okay, and. Um, what we're going to start with is that first of all we're going to we're going to start with just exploring github.com okay so I, I just want everybody to go to github.com um, and uh, I don't know if you have access to these slides uh, uh, is there any um, 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 <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's not necessary that you have to, but I just want to show you that, for example, here I have uh, in, in Git, uh, sorry, first of all, going too fast. Uh, first of all, uh, if you go to github.com, you're going to see something, something like this. If you just created your account, this is going to be empty, uh, and, and your, you're going to have your username there, uh, and and that's that's going to be pretty much it. Okay. Uh, once you start adding repositories, uh, those repositories are going to show up here on the left. Uh, once you start following people in a type of social uh, uh, network type of setting, uh, you're going to start seeing whatever whenever they update their work, you will see it here in the the news feed. Okay. Um, and the the the. One of the one of the first things that I wanted to show you is that if you go to a, a repository, um, um, I, I should have put the link, but um, is there any way that um, I don't have a? Do, do you have the slides? Do you have access to the slides? I'm not. Um, um, I don't know if I have the. Uh, but but uh, 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 for now let's let, let me let me just if for this I will this is not exactly a hands-on part so I, I just here I just want to show you a repository I will, I'll share these slides and you have all the links that I'm showing you here but here I'm just showing you a repository this is a repository of some researcher okay um, and what what you see here it's first is the username of the research the the of the person in in GitHub. This will correspond to the uh, the repository, and everything you see here is basically the content of the repository. Um, here it's organized into the, the, the different folders. There's going to be a README file. 
GitHub, it, it provides this, this nice service that when there's a readme file with an extension .md, it will show it to you. It will render it right here in, in, as, a, as a web page. So here, it's this, this is the readme file of the repository, which shows you what's, what's going on in there. Um, and what I, what I like for you to take away, even if you're not going to uh, uh, end up using anything of, of GitHub as a, as a user, you can definitely benefit from GitHub as an explorer in a sense that you can start looking at people, uh, uh, people's work. Uh, so you here you you are accessing to the, the entire reproduction materials in in a way that at least I was not used to when I when I was in grad school. Basically, you you would sort of like have to send an email saying, "Can you please send me the code? I would like to check out your materials." Uh, this this is a much more uh, open approach in the sense that. You can say, okay, this is the working folder of this person. In the analysis file, probably is where the script is. Let me go take a look at the script, and I can. Nothing of this is in my computer yet. I'm just looking at it as I look at a website, and and I can say, ah, maybe I want to just check out this file script uh, and take a look, just inspect it to 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 learn how are they loading this data for their their study. And, and it brings sort of like a, a whole new level of transparency that you can communicate and teach uh, and, and, and share with others. Because for example, in, in here, this is again a file that is not in my computer, but I, I can link, click on, for example, that line 24, maybe that's interesting and I wanna share it with somebody. And I, I can copy a, a link that it's permanent to this. So just open a incognito, uh, um, window in my computer and I could email this to somebody and say, hey, can you please take a look at that, that line in the code? I think that this is how we should be doing our analysis. Uh, it's much more uh, actionable than, than, than in theory being describing how, how to do things. Um, so, uh, and, and the good news is that more and more researchers are putting their working uh, folders, especially the reproduction package when they should, should meet to a journal, they will put these materials on GitHub, uh, and you will see, for example, this researcher uh, uh, commonly uh, updates, um, uh, for example, uh, uh, teaching materials and and and, and uh, that's teaching materials. But you can find papers that they might have written uh, and. For example, this is a code to replicate one of the, the papers that they, they publish. And same idea, you, you go and dive deeply into the materials. Uh, so, and this, this is just one example, but, uh, uh, and this is already a little bit dated. I think I did a few years ago, and more and more people are putting their, their, their the materials in, in GitHub. What I want to encourage you, again, if you're not gonna use it, that's totally fine. But one thing that you could do is to start looking for researchers that you might know. Just search for people here. Uh, um, uh, yes. Ah, uh, great. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So you could, you could, you could actually, yeah. Look at. Uh, so my, uh, I don't know if you look for me. Uh, so, my might be a case that it shows up. Yeah. So. But the, the search the, the search engine of GitHub, it's not my favorite. Sometimes it, 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 it shows you what something, sometimes it doesn't. The way I, I end up finding people on GitHub is that I look at their websites uh, as researchers and they post or, or they post the material somewhere. And when, when I find them as, as uh, for example, here, I will click on their username. That's me. Um, and, and then you can follow them. Uh, I, I cannot. Here you will click follow. Uh, if you if you click in this thing here, um, yeah. So you could you will click follow uh, on that, uh, and that basically will send you a notification every time that I'm added something to my my account. Uh, um, uh, so. That's a great way to follow. So, like people who are doing similar research in in, in your your space uh, and learn from them. Um, but it's also uh, not only for research. I think that there are great resources for courses. Uh, more and more people are putting the entire teaching materials on there, so you can literally take the entire uh, slide, script, everything that they use in the course, and modify it for you for your convenience. I have I have 
I, some of the courses I've taught are up there, so you can check them out too. Um, one one uh, fascinating thing is that for, during the, the, the COVID uh, pandemic, um, the way uh, many researchers and, and news organizations reacted to this was, was very different to, uh, to what we've seen in the past, where, where basically the, the, the Hopkins uh, model for, for assessing effects on mortality or, 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 or tracking the effects of COVID, all of that was available online. Uh, not only the data, but the code, same idea with the Imperial College model, the, this nice inf, uh, visualizations that the New York Times had for a long time and still has, all of that was available. And you can, again, look at, look at the figure. If you're in the New York Times or in The Economist or you're in the page of the Hopkins University and you're looking at what they're doing, you say, like, hey, this is interesting. I would like to dive deeper. Somewhere in there, there's going to be a code, a, a link that says go to GitHub. And, and at least now, when you, when you click in that, before, before this session, maybe you might have clicked in that and you would arrive here and you would have said, like, what is this? I, where, where is the download button? How, how do I access this? Uh, the, at least now you, you have a, some sense of how to, what, what is this? So first of all, this, this is going to be the folder. You're just looking at the, at the files. This is going to be the render readme file. Um, and, and if you want to interact with this, there are going to be uh, three ways that you can interact with this. Um, here I'm looking at, at a repository from this is the, the, the Hopkins University repository. Uh, the first uh, way in which I can interact with this is I can create a copy of this repository and bring it to my account. Okay? That, that, would, that would be the first way. Uh, that's the action of forking. When I take one, uh, um, one repository of one user and I take it to another user uh, in, in, a, in a way that it's linked. So, uh, so I will just click on fork. And after doing that, I'm taking that entire uh, working folder and analysis and maybe there's some data in there. Now, it, it looks like nothing has changed, right? All the, all the materials are there. It's, it's almost like nothing changed. The big thing that changed is that now this is my username. I'm, this is under my account, right? What, why is that important? Because now I can go ahead and modify this however I want, uh, and then bring it back uh, uh, and suggest modifications to the, to the original authors. But I can take this and run with it my, my way, OK? Um, that's that's uh, the first uh, approach, uh, forking. Um, the second approach, uh, uh, it could be that you can just download it. Good, good, good old uh, normal download. Uh, and I, again, totally fine. You can go here in, in that green button and clean, click download a zip. If you download a zip, it's going to come back. It's going to go to your computer. Uh, and it's going to be completely detached from the original analysis. Basically, you have, it, is, it is as if somebody shared your, their Dropbox folder or something like that. And, and you have downloaded it in your computer. Um, again, useful way of accessing materials. Uh, and the third one that we're going to be exploring is that you can uh, especially after you have a uh, fork it. Um, um, uh, or, or even even before you have fork it, you can you can uh, open it in your computer in a way that is connected to the to the repository. Uh, and that's that's the key. The, here we're gonna open it uh, uh, and we're do, gonna do this first strange step. Um, where is it? Here. We're going to, for the first time, we're going to do this strange step that was going to basically pull it into our computer. Uh, and the first time you pull, the first time you pull something into your computer using the GitHub desktop app it has the terminology of cloning. You're, when, when you clone a, a repository, is that you're pulling it down to your computer for the first time. So if you click here, or was I here? I can put open in the GitHub desktop app. It's gonna uh, offer me to open the GitHub desktop app. And once it offers, it offers to open it, it's gonna say, do you wanna clone this repository into this location on your computer? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna say yes. I, I, I feel like I, I pick a bad example because maybe it has a lot of data and it might take a while. 
Okay, yeah, yeah. So thanks, thanks for the warning. Uh, um, yeah, so I, I should have selected something more light. Uh, yeah, so let's just, I'll just pick this and I'll say open my, hopefully this is not another. Um, yeah, so basically, but this this is, and we're not gonna do that, nothing with this specific uh, uh, repository, but I just wanted to become you, I wanna help you so I become familiar with, okay, you're reading a, a paper, you're reading an article on, on, on the New York Times, you're uh, checking somebody's materials, and it says click on this report, click, click to see on GitHub, it's gonna take you to here. Then you you're gonna have three ways of interacting. One, you take it to your own account by a fork. Two, you can download it as a zip and forget about GitHub for the rest of your life. Three, uh, you, can, you can clone it and bring it to your computer and start working from there, okay? Uh, and, and once you clone it, it's gonna, uh, um, the, the GitHub desktop app is gonna say, now you have this right there, it's gonna say you have this repository and you can check out where is it in your computer to show in Finder or Explorer and you will find it there, okay? But right now, you, you're not doing, I, I'm not requiring you to do anything of this yet, uh, but I just wanted to give you a sense of how to interact with, uh, with materials that you find or you might have seen before on GitHub in a, in a way that it's slightly less uh, terrifying. Okay, uh, so that, that's what we have done so far. But now, now we're gonna get into the action of creating our own repository. And this is, this is where we're gonna start doing uh, a little bit of our, 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 our own work and, and say, okay, what if we wanna use GitHub and Git to, to create a, a working folder where we're gonna start putting all our materials, all right? Um, so what are we gonna do is that we're gonna go to github.com and I'm, I'm, I will assume that you have been logged in already. If you have not been logged in already, pair with your with your with the person that is right next to you. Okay, uh, but if you have been logged in already, you're gonna you're gonna have that plus sign there, and you can you're gonna click there and gonna say new repository. Okay. Uh, once it says new repository, the repository is gonna be under your username. Um, let's put anything, test, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, for me, I, I have a lot of tests, so you can just put test or something like that. Here you can put a short description, not necessary. You can have it a public or private. Uh, for now, it doesn't matter. You're not gonna put any materials there, so nothing nothing is gonna, um, change. It used to be a case that that the the free version only allow you to have private public. I think now the free version also allows you to have a private. And yes, this is not an advertisement to, to go pay for this. So don't worry. Uh, before you click OK, the one thing I do want you to do is to cl click on add a readme file. So this is going to create a working folder that's going to have one file, which is going to be a readme. A readme on a plain text file that is, is an extension, it's called .md for markdown, but markdown is, it's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's a plain text uh, file uh, that, that has some nice features, but for us, basically, you're, it's, this is essentially the same thing as creating a readme.txt, okay? Um, this file, these options down here, not gonna touch on it for now, but you can tell certain things to Git uh, and GitHub that you wanna ignore in your file. You don't want it to track those things. This could be data sets that, or, or, or other things that you don't wanna um, track the history on. And you also might, once you start developing some, some uh, content, you might wanna put a, a license uh, for, for the, to facilitate uh, the dissemination uh, or if you wanna have some intellectual property. Um, so for now, the main thing is just create a, uh, some name for the repository. I will go with public, um, you can put private if you want. Click yes on readme file and just create, create a readme, create repository. That, that we're one step ahead, wait, wait for me. That, that's, uh, we're, we're gonna get there in a second, okay? 
Um, so you have created your first repository. If you if you are here, you have you, you have your first repository. Okay. Uh, any 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 issues getting here? Okay. So again, what you have here is a working folder that I'm going to start saying working folder. I'm just going to say repo that has just one file. That's called the MD. This working folder is not in your computer yet. It's just on the web on GitHub.com. Okay. Um, so uh, um, one uh, and, and as I said, the, this is the important part that right there is showing is showing the, the that the file is there. Uh, and as I was saying, the the dot md files. If you look at them, uh, just the file alone, and says just show me the code. It's, it's just that. It's in this case, it's just hash with a title. Um, but if you write in it, it's just going to be text. Okay. Don't don't edit it just yet. But it's just a text file. The nice ve uh, feature of a markdown extension is that uh, it can be easily rendered into richer text. In this case, this this thing that you're seeing down here, it's a it's a web page. Uh, uh, but for now, not not relevant. Um, okay. So this is a repository. It's it's up in the web, and now we're gonna start bringing the 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 the, the strangeness to, to our world. So we're gonna we're gonna do this step for the first time. We're gonna pull it to our computer. Okay. So for that, we're gonna go here and click code and set open with GitHub Desktop. Okay. That's gonna say, do you want to clone this repository? I'm gonna say yes, and and this is this is where you you have the question, right? The your your name, Harrison. So you are here, right? Okay. So you you said, do you want to clone this repository from the web? Uh, and and do you where do you want to put it? That is that the path where you would like to put it? Would you want you can choose another path? Doesn't matter for now. Okay, you can put it anywhere for now. Okay. Anybody who's having issues with this, because there might be some logging issues here, and somebody might be getting stuck. Yeah. So you need to have uh, installed the GitHub Desktop app. If you have not installed it, I think you need to work with what's okay. your name? Okay. Jane. Jane. Okay. So you, you you do continue together. Okay. Um, okay. Any any other issues? Okay. So we're here, and we're gonna uh, clone and. And the, we're gonna pull it. The first time we pull is called cloning, um, and we just clone our repository in our computer. Okay. And 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 if you, if you if this has not become super clear, my goal with this is to to expose you with the. There's a lot of jargon in here, and, and I want to expose you to this jargon in in a in the simplest way possible that it it doesn't create much of a barrier. But if you are like me, you're gonna forget seventy percent of this jargon. Uh, so, um, and these slides I, I should have shared before, but uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put there's gonna be a link with a to a little handout that I that I put together with all this stuff um, that you you're gonna you can use as a reminder later on. Um, but where was I? Here. Okay. So we're here. We just did our first pull. The first time when we pull for the first time, it's called cloning. But now every every time from now on, every time that we pull, it's just going to be pulling. Okay. Um, so now we have what, what what has happened. This this thing used to be in our in the web. Now it's in our computer. So if you click Show on Finder or an Explorer, if you have a Windows, uh, you're going to have this. This is a, this is a folder, right? Uh, depending on your view settings, you might see other files here. Uh, because if you if you if your view setting view settings of showing hidden files are enabled, you're gonna see a dot git folder there that is tracking all the changes. You are not meant to touch that folder uh, because it's, it's it's where it's basically tracking all the history. So um, for the the visible files is just one, the one that we have created, and now we're gonna basically use this file that that we have created as our sample code script, and we're gonna edit it a little bit and go through. Go, go through these steps. This is, we're going to pretend that this is our file, save, save, then commit, then push, then pull, and do those kind of things. Okay? So, where was I? This is our file. This file, um, you can open it with any text editor. Uh, if, you, if you have, um, 
Notepad, uh, that's fine. Uh, if you have um, R Studio, it comes with a with a text editor too. Uh, I, I have one that's called uh, um, Visual Code, but I'm not going to open it. With that. The one that I used to. The, it, this part, is, the choice of text editors, completely irrelevant. I don't want you to get hung up on on which one is the best. So I'll I'll open it with um, with R Studio for now, and. There, right there, this, this is the important thing. This is the file, just readme.md, and it has that one line, all right? In Markdown, in Markdown, the, the, the syntax uh, that allows us to, to bring this rich text is that if you use certain symbols, like the hash here, it's gonna read that as a title. But if you type here, just um, our first line, something like that, it's just going to be plain text, and it's going to be uh, rendered as plain text. Okay, um, and basically, we just this is our code script. We just added our first line to our code script. I have not saved, and that was on purpose. Okay, I have not hit save. Okay, so I will just switch to the GitHub Desktop app and show you that the GitHub Desktop app has not changed. Nothing has changed. Right now, I'm going to go to. Um, to the, the, the editor, and I'm going to hit save. Uh, I, uh, did I say? Yeah. Yes. Ah, yes, yeah, excellent. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And so you need to open the, I need everybody to be able to open the, uh, the dot MD, the readme.md with any text editor, right? So it doesn't have to be our studio, but yeah, thank you very much. This is, this is a super helpful point. So show in finder. And then that one, click on the right. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, abrir con, and then our studio, there you go. Or, or anything. So I, I, this could be notepad, it could be Stata, I, I think anything. Anybody else who's stuck with that? No? Any 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 other who start with that that step? Okay, great. So, yes. How you did that now? But if you look at the desktop app, it has this option here that says "Open in R Studio," but it doesn't actually do that. Is that? Yeah, so, so why do you go and open it the other way? Yes, it's so when when it says "Open in R Studio," it's offering you to open the entire repo, the entire okay. project. What I did now was just to open the the file. Okay. okay? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so let's open the, the file. We all have the file here. We add a line. I did not save. You and I did not save, and I show you the GitHub desktop app. Nothing has changed. Now I hit save. And if we look at the GitHub desktop app, it's saying, hey, something has changed. In green, it's showing what you have added, what we have added. So it's saying, you just added that one line to your code. OK? That that and think again. This is a, a super simple example, but think that this is your uh, script, and you have added ten lines. And now you remember, ah, I I I, hit, I have to hit save. This is this is nothing uh, new. So once you hit save, then Git is going to say, ah, something changed here. Uh, there's something new here. And and the important thing to keep in mind is that both GitHub Desktop app and the GitHub web are meant to show you what's changed and to compare what's changed. It's not meant to edit things. So one impulse that you might feel when you look at this app is like, oh, where do I edit things in this app? In the app, you're not going to edit anything. You're only going to see what has changed, and you're going to take these snapshots. That's all. Save. It. So you open the, 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 yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you're right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now. Go take a look at the, uh, where's the yeah, desktop app? Uh, the, you need to have opened the GitHub desktop app. Oh, OK. Uh, one moment. That one, yeah, that one, right yeah, there. So okay. Yeah. yeah, OK. So right now, it's you see, after you save, it says, ah, you have changed something. That, and this is, this is the, the, not, no record has been built. The only thing that it's happening is that our, the, 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 the GitHub desktop app is telling you, Something has changed. Okay, keep an eye on that. Okay, so yes. So for yes. So this this is why these uh, additional steps are so like meant to be uh, not automatic. Uh, so for now, we're, we're in this first step of the exercise. We're assuming that you're working alone. 
The next step, we're going to bring a, a, a fictitious collaborator uh, and sh show how these things happen. Okay. So now you have modified this, and now you're going to uh, you you're going to take this snapshot. Okay. And when you're taking the snapshot, is the action of committing. Okay. So and this is the snapshot of the entire working folder. Over here, saying okay, this is everything that has changed in your working folder. Take a snapshot. So for that, you leave a little message, something like. Um, first commit, or it can be just one word or something like that, uh, um, uh, in computer, something like that, doesn't matter, um, and you're going to commit. And once you commit, the only thing that has happened is that you, you're moving here. Uh, um, you, you could have saved without committing, and now we, we save and commit, and it, it has now Git, the software Git has kept has recorded a history of where our working uh, folder stands as of now. Until now, it, it's basically tracking the entire history from, from commit to commit. Okay. So if I go to a GitHub desktop app, nothing, there's nothing here because there are no changes. This thing is showing me just the changes. If I go at the history, it's gonna show me that there are two commits. The one with which I started the repository. And the one that I just did in the computer just now. Okay. So these these are the we, we have done two of the three weird steps. First step, uh, we 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 pull, right? Second step, we we did one commit, then we're gonna do a let's let's do one more commit just to get used to it. So let, let's go here, add a second line. This is just poetic. Um save. Um, you look at here, and look, here I'm going to do something else. So here I'm going to, I added a second line, and I'm not going to commit. Now I'm going to go and add a third line. Add a third, or, uh, or even to make it more clear, add a third line, uh, and I will modify the second line. And modify the, the second line, okay? Now I'm going to save. And when I look at a GitHub, uh, uh, the desktop app, or, or Git in this case, what Git is, is tracking is the difference between the last commit and what, what happened with multiple saves. I did multiple saves, but it, it can only tell me the difference between the last commit and this one. Okay? So it's tracking the difference. This is what it's telling me. Relative to the last commit where you added this line, now you have this, these new differences that are, that were added in two saves, but for, for from Git's perspective, it's just one save. Okay. So, okay, poesy here. So second commit. These are just super short messages that at some point you might get tired and you just type one uh, quick word, uh, but doesn't matter. So we have done these steps. We go here. We are done with our working session, done with lunch or, or going to end of the day. So we're going to send things back to a server, and that's the act of pushing. Okay. Uh, so you you can push there, you can push here, you can push here repository, and somewhere in there is going to be push. So it's going to be uh, you just click whatever it says push, and now basically uh, all this went up to the to the um, uh, to a web to a server in this case. Uh, so if I go here, it's empty, but if I reload, it's gonna show this that looks strange, right? Let, let me, let, 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 let's wait for a second on that thing looking strange. But if I just show you the, 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 the raw code, it, this is exactly what we added on, on our computer, okay? Okay? Um, so any problems pushing? Any, any issues pushing? Okay? All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, not, nothing's automatic. Thank you. Thank you. And it, that relates to Julia's question. Uh, everything it's it's so like manual, so to say, in in because it, it really wants to keep uh, a. Everything that you that you any of these three weird actions that I have described are meant to leave sort of like a, 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 a 
uh, a paper trail that you chose to leave. Okay, nothing's gonna be uh, synced automatically. Yeah, everything everything automates automatically. Yeah, so exactly. So that has that has definitely advantages and disadvantages, and th this is meant to uh, if you if you want to keep a, a a track of everything that's going on. Um, uh, this, this is going to be uh, particularly helpful when resolving conflicts. Uh, so right now, think of this is your project in the local machine. This is your project in the in the web. They are sort of like at the same step. So and remember, you you need to stop thinking of your local machine as as the center of work. You you can burn this thing right now, and and this is the what matters, right? So you close, you whatever happens, then you connect with a different machine, and you're going to start from the same step. Okay, and that, that, that is, that's a very uh, important point. Okay, um, yes, Julia, please. Uh, yes, yeah, and so each repository, it's it's its own thing, and and you're. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, so, and and here I when I when I show you the browser, I did a, like a little bit of a cheating because I I went from from here we were here and 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 I clicked somewhat quickly um, on this. Uh, I, I that's only because um, uh, I wanted to show you that that these are these are the lines that we modified in our local script that we push to the origin or to, to the to the server uh, and and the other thing that I wanted to um, to so like a uh, gloss over is that when when you look at a, a markdown document uh, uh, for some of you or probably for all of you it's gonna be it's gonna look like this the lines are gonna be so like concatenated uh, and this is because markdown it's a beautiful thing but it has the 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 um, the strange added re requisite that for you to enter a new line, you need to put two spaces between each line. Okay, so um, uh, uh, we we can as an exercise we can go here. Um, we're here, so over here I'm gonna add two two spaces after each line. So one two, one two. That extra point that comes by default, sometimes I add an extra one just in case. One, two, and now I'm going to save. And then I'm going to look at the GitHub desktop. Um, ah, you see, it's showing me. Um, do I have two of this open? Uh, um, this doesn't. So here, this, 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 I just added. You see here it's saying you deleted these two lines and you replace them by these two other lines, but it's basically showing me the difference, right? Uh, and now I'm gonna commit this. It comes with a pre -pop when you modify one file, it gives you a pre-populated message, so you can click commit right away, or you can write a more thorough message or a Jabber, like a weird thing. You can just commit that and um, push it, and, and then you will see it uh, here. Uh, and that's going to fix the, the lines uh, part. Uh, the, the line part, uh, it, it, don't get too hung up on that. It, it is, it's, my main idea is I want you to, I, I use that as an excuse to, to get you exposed to these steps, right? Pull, um, save, commit, 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 save, commit, and then push, okay? Yes? But it's not showing anything different on the desktop. No, no worries. So you save here. I did. And now um, oh, go I to the, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, can you show me the? Yeah, go ahead, if you want to. So um, right there, yeah. uh, you're looking at the history. Oh. So yeah, oh. no worries. So <laughs> changes history. And now let's use the pre-populated message and say update. OK. And then there it is, OK? And then you, if you push it, it's going to go up in, in the web, OK? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just I something, and then I so basically over here it's everything fine. So you're looking at the history, right? Right. Yeah. 
but here mm -hmm. uh, it's not showing up because before it was like some some icon here and yeah. i click it and just basically wash it out all of this stuff that i did so, before no worry so the, the here we're looking at the change the, the changes nothing has changed here's the history so i trust on the this is fine and focus on the changes if, uh, in general um and and here let's just reload and see what happens uh, let me take a look at this. I think here. I deleted this that was true. No, no worries. So right there. Um let me take a look at the take a quick look at the history. Um, um, hmm. Ah yeah, so you switch branches, no worries. So oh. this is something that happens and we'll 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 go through this exercise in a second. Sorry. So, so I have to click on, on the name. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, oh, I just want to click on this. Sorry, oh. <laughs> how do you click? Uh, it is like this. I think we're good. Yeah, now now okay. click on there. Yeah. yeah that one. Actions. Yeah. 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 And now yeah, exactly. Now you if you have the space, it's gonna show. Okay. Great. Yeah. Um. No. So that that happened. That that, that thing that happened. We're gonna re review in a second. But but the the main th yes, please. For markdown, for this extension of a file that is called markdown, the two spaces are, are it's a syntax thing that it's it's meant to, like if, if you don't leave two spaces and put enter, sometimes it might render as a, in a concatenated way or think all the time render it in a concatenated way. But it's not it's not central to 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 what we're doing now. It's, I, I just use it as an excuse to to show you like how how to re-edit things. Okay. The, the the main point. So and we have something like twenty minutes left. The, the 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 main point that I, that I want to emphasize is that we just went through this entire exercise. We just did this, and from now on, basically think of basically the, the, you modified one file, but you can modify twenty files. You can within each file you can modify two hundred lines. Doesn't matter, but you need to go through a motion. You need to arrive to your computer. The first thing that you have to do, you need to go to the GitHub Desktop app and pull. How do you do that? You you click fetch, which is sort of like checking on the server. And given that these two are at the same point, it's going to say there's nothing to pull, so you're good. It's not going to tell me, it's not giving me the option to pull. As soon as I modify something here, it's going to tell me that I have to pull. Okay. Then I'm going to start working. I'm going to modify things. I'm going to save. I'm going to commit. I'm going to save. I'm going to commit. And once I'm done, I'm going to push. Okay. And that's going to be that's 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 the motion that I want you to get used to when working on this. Okay. That's like. 80% of the exercise in my view. Yeah. So rather than opening up, say they're working on bar code, opening up the R code, you know, file or whatever, you yep. load that up from GitHub desktop or it doesn't matter. Do it. Uh, so you the what you do is that you when you pull, you're gonna you're gonna sort of like update the latest information to your local computer and then you start opening things up with within your local computer with R and stuff like that. Okay. So there's no difference. If it hasn't been made, then it's do it away. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. So and now within the, this this very first demo, we're gonna get a little bit in this this idea of the collaboration. But for now, we're gonna sorry. The first step is we're gonna make a, a fictitious collaborator. Uh, this is gonna be either fictitious yourself or fictitious buddy or somewhere else that they're gonna modify something uh, in their computer that is not the one that you have right in front of you. They're gonna modify something, and then they're gonna let you know, hey, I just modified something. Can you please start working where I left? That that's that's the scenario where we wanna start now okay how are we going to do that we're going to go here in the in the repository that you created the the test repository here and remember i told you that the that both the github desktop app and the github uh, web uh, server are not meant to edit things they're not meant to edit but you can edit things so for for now we're going to use that as a as an excuse or we're going to edit it on the web okay so we're going to click in that Pencil or pen thing to edit, and here we can edit this this uh, this code script. Uh, but here we're sort of like pretending that we're on a different computer, and in this different computer, our collaborator is editing. First of all, pulling, editing, saving, committing, pushing. Okay, but all of this is going to happen just in this one line here. So here I'm going to add one uh, a fifth line and just super creative. 
added fifth line, and I'm gonna say in the second computer. Okay. Um, and here, when I click commit changes, what it's gonna do is gonna save commit and, and it's gonna push to the web, but it's already in the web, okay? Uh, so just as is, commit changes. Okay, uh, uh, were, were all of you able to do this? Okay, so and, and this is this is essentially what happened. Remember, we had this these two stages of our of our these two stages of our project locally and and remotely in the in the in the server. Now, remotely, what happens is that it's ahead. Remotely, the project is ahead of us. Uh, so our our fictitious buddy or collaborator modifies something, and and that results in the in the in the in the remote project being ahead of us, okay? So now it makes sense, this action of pooling. So you're gonna start your work there or come back from lunch or something like that, go here. And the first thing you do, you pull. How do you do that? You fetch to check if something has changed and it's gonna say, hey, something changed. There's something for you to pull. Your collaborator or somebody has modified things, okay? So uh, this, is, this is where you're gonna pull, okay? Uh, and and just before pulling, just to be triple clear here, this is this is the latest version that I have here. But now I'm gonna pull. And and if you are working with a Notepad uh, or certain editor, I think the state that do the do file editor has the same thing. That uh, if I look at this, the, the 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 new line has arrived. So it refreshes automatically. This is a text editor that it refreshes automatically. Some text editors don't refresh automatically, so you need to X out of the of the of the text editor, you know, close the file, and open it again to see that the file has changed. Okay. But here you can say that, oh, this is my collaborator that added new things. Okay. And and this is this this relates to the, the point that uh, what's your name? Rusalin. That Rusalin and Julie were saying. Basically, there's a lot of so like. It feels kind of clunky, but but we, everything is sort of like manual in a way. Nothing happens automatically, but but you before you pull, you had your work environment. After you pull, something changed, and you saw that change. That, so that, that's the important thing. So and you're like, hey, where's this line coming from? Then you go to the GitHub desktop app, check in history, and it's like, ah, this is the this is the update that 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 my collaborator did up in the web. You have a, a, a history for that, okay? Um, so, and this, this again, we already did so like eighty percent of this thing that where where I think it, it's very valuable. Now we're moving to the next so like next ten percent, which is how how to how 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 to interact in terms of um, changes that your collaborators have done and and how to go about it. Uh, uh, right now, we we did a a, a somewhat friendly version of, of, of changes with collaborators. And we're gonna do one more just, just to, to hammer down the, the idea. We're gonna do, okay, now we're gonna do another change in, 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 in locally, uh, okay? So we're gonna say, um, I'm not the most creative person, so I, it, and that was not the fifth line, that was the fourth line, but so uh, add the six, uh, Six line uh, in uh, the local computer. Um, save, save. Uh, if I go to changes, there's something to save, right? So I added this. Uh, I added something locally. Commit. If I go to if I go to to a web, is it going to show me the changes? Why? I have not pushed exactly. Yeah. So I'm just going to refresh just to make drive the point home. Uh, it's not here, right? So now I'm going to go here. I'm going to push. Then I'm going to go to a web. I'm going to reload, and it's going to be there, right? And again, with the same issue with the the, the two spaces because I forgot. Okay. So. Um, and this is this is where 
so th this has been sort of me and the collaborator, the collaboration with Alter Me. Uh, uh, it has been pacific. Everybody's modifying one line at a time. There's no issues here. Now we're going to introduce conflicts. Okay, we're we're gonna we're gonna uh, modify the same line. That's that's a source of conflict. Okay. The, notice that it's kind of cool that we can both modify the same file, and there's not going to be conflict as long as we don't modify the same line. Okay. If we modify the same line, there's going to be a conflict. Okay. So here, what well, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to modify in my alter ego setting, and I'm going to modify in my local setting. Okay. So first, I'm going to modify here. And I'm going to say, um, so first of all, I'm going to add the, the two spaces. I think the two spaces were missing here. Um, then I'm going to modify something here. Then I'm going to say, uh, this is the seventh, seventh line uh, in the web. OK? Um, and here, again, commit. Save, commit, push, all, all happening together. And I'm, I'm going to change the message here just to distinguish it more clearly. So I'm going to say update readme on the web. Um, just, just to illustrate one point in a second. But now I'm going to, so I, I, this, these are the two projects. The, the, the remote just move ahead, right? Uh, and now the local here, I'm going to add. Uh, uh, look at this seventh line. So I'm, it's a, it, it cannot be exactly the same content, right? Because if it's the same content, there's not going to be conflict. So add a seventh line in the local machine. Save. Um, save. Now go to the GitHub desktop app. Uh, it shows me that there's a change. I'm going to commit. Remember, the, 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 the remotes ahead, this guy here, I'm going to commit. And there's not going to be conflict, because this, this, this is not talking yet with the, with, the, with, the, with the server, right? So I'm just going to save update, update in local machine. And I'm put the seventh line just as a reminder. Um, and now. I'm gonna. These these two basically they went in different directions. They are they are ahead and they are they are they are out of sync. So uh, this is the case where me and my collaborator have both working on in parallel on this. Okay, and this this can totally happen. Um, and it's I it is uh, preferable that when you're working with somebody, uh, you you say like, hey, I'm gonna be working on this section of the code, and you're gonna work on that section of the code. So. It, it sort of like it forces you to, to talk a little bit more with collaborators when people are going to be editing the same line, but you can still edit the same line. But, but there's going to be conflicts, OK? So I'm going to push. And it's going to say, you forgot to fetch. You forgot to check and pull. Uh, because things have changed since the, since the last time you checked the server. So now I'm going to, it's telling me basically pull. Remember to pull. Once I pull, it's going to tell me that there's a conflict because I'm crashing on the same on the same line. There's one line where there's a conflict. OK. Um, OK, so um, don't don't click on anything here yet. I just want you to have the conflict. OK, so to succeed in this stage, you have had you need to have reached the conflict. Uh, um, you got the conflict, you got the conflict, you got the conflict. No. No worries, no worries. So, uh, local, did you save? I think so. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, and then, uh -huh. um, and did you modify it on low in the remote? Mm -hmm. um, in the web? Yeah. And then I added space and then I saved it as web. Yeah. yeah. So it's here, seven. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just add some more. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So now we're gonna push. 
at maybe maybe I think I know what happened. So uh, let me reload. Uh, so it's here. So now we're gonna the things that we need to mm -hmm. probably you you pull before you start editing. So let line ten. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna add something. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put it here. And then I'm gonna go to this and in line ten I'm gonna add something different. Mm -hmm. And then here I'm just gonna update and it's gonna give me error. Yeah, so fetch and we are we're here pulling and we're getting this conflict, okay? So it is telling us, okay, there's a conflict. You, there are different uh, text editors in which you can open it to see the conflict. Um, there used to be a very nice editor called Atom that it will show you the conflicts in a more visually attractive way because they're, they're not attractive conflicts. They, they, they don't, don't look good at all. Uh, but for now, basically, this is, you need to open this in your whatever text editor you have. So I'm just gonna uh, go to to the I'm, I was editing in the R Studio text editor, so I'm gonna go to text to R Studio, and as you see, these weird things show up, right? So it shows there that that thing came uh, up here, that thing up here, that thing up here, and it's basically showing me where are the, 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 these are where the differences are. So. Remember that in one I added a dot, so one has a dot, the other one doesn't have a dot. Um, for some reason, it, it thinks that there's a difference in this line, but there's no much of a difference, and it's in the seventh line when there's a, when there's a when there's a difference. So this is the one that I that I um, put in the web. This is the one that I put in the in the uh, local computer. Yeah. So, and I always forget like, the, the head is uh, one and the other one is the one that comes after, but I, I keep forgetting which one's which. Uh, the important thing is that it's separating, okay, this is where one of the changes were happening, this is where other of the, the changes were happening. And, and the, the, this is pretty, um, um, it, even though it looks weird, it is pretty straightforward to fix. Basically, it's telling you whatever it's within this region, you need to make up your mind and keep whatever you want to pick. Keep whatever you want to keep. Uh, so here I'm going to say, you know, this one, I like the one with the dot, so I'm just going to delete this guy here. This one is exactly the same, so I'm just going to delete this one. And this version, I think I like this ver version better than this other version, so I'm going to delete this one. And once you're done, you're just going to remove all the ugly terms, the, these symbols. Um, and you're gonna hit save. And once you hit save, you're gonna go back to a GitHub desktop app and it says, great, you have fixed the whole thing. Don't worry, continue to merge. Okay? And then it's gonna merge everything and everything is gonna be updated all in the same uh, uh, place, okay? Uh, and that, that's an example of a, a simple conflict uh, to, be, to be addressed uh, using this. There are, there are many conflicts that this, is, this can get much more complicated. And for sure, you will run into a situation where there's going to be too many conflicts to address. Um, and we'll, we'll get into that in a second. But for now, I would like to, to, to have everybody on, on the same pitch with this. Jane, you look. In I just was seeing what would happen if I hit push, but I didn't actually do it right. Okay. So I'll just wait. Uh, ah, yeah, no, so yeah, okay, so you, you already had the conflict. So everybody had the conflict, delete it, keep whatever they want to keep, and they're all on the same page? Okay, great. So what, what happens after the conflict, now everything, it, everything has been resolved locally. And for it to be resolved in both places, you need to send it back. So you, you, once you hit push, Everything's going to be updated, uh, and and it's, everything's going to be on, on the same place again. Okay, uh, right. So yeah, the, 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 this, the, that's a lot of progress. So the the fact that a we we have already been able to 
to go through this workflow alone, the, the pushing. Now, now I hope, when I, when I told you the first time that pulling is important, probably didn't make much sense because there was no changes. So now I hope pulling makes a little bit more sense because you, you need to, like, if your colleagues have changed things or you have changed things in other computers, you need to check what, what's going on. Then you're gonna go through the, the, these, these steps, then you're gonna push it, and sometimes they're gonna be conflicts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so hard to delete. It, yeah, it, it, so, um, uh, uh, where's this thing? Where's the file? Um, boom, I just deleted it, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go to GitHub, sorry, to GitHub desktop. It's gonna say, hey, you just did all these changes. We are basically removing all these lines, which is effectively deleting this file. I'm gonna say, I delete the file. Okay, file deleted, push. Yeah, so now I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna, where am I? Uh, here, no, here, yeah. So I'm gonna go to the, the and there's gonna be nothing, the, the file's gone, right? Excellent, so yeah, thank you for, the, for that. The, 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 the main, point of this version control is to see the versions and how things have been changed, right? So here, you can click on this history button. It's gonna have the entire history. And this, this thing grows very fast. You can get in the hundreds or in the thousands very quickly. So if you click there, you're gonna see, this is everything that has happened, okay? This is from the, from the, for, this is the, from the, this is how your files look when you created this thing. It was, it just had that title. Um, or here, when you added that line, uh, or here, when you deleted the whole thing. So here, this, this um, it's just showing you the difference relative to the one before you deleted the whole thing. Ah, again, when I delete that file, what should I do? I go to a history, and this is, this is where basically, if you use the command line or you use other tools for Git and GitHub, you can, a more fancifully uh, access this stuff, but for if you want to access stuff that you have lost, and this is what I do, you go to um, um, where was I? I was looking at the history. You go to a history, and you select. Okay, I think right before when I merged this branch thing, when I did this thing, this is where this is the one that I want to go back. You just click on browse files. And here you're looking at the entire repository as it was at that commit, okay? So one thing you can do is you download it as a zip file. And then you bring it to your, um, this is like super uh, manual and nothing fancy, but you just download it as zip here. So it's gonna download it with that, it's gonna be the name of the repository plus that gigantic uh, ID that corresponds to a commit. Um, and you're gonna just grab this, copy, paste, and, and it, it's, it shows, uh, it comes back to your, to your work. And, and that's how basically you are, you're, you're gonna be addressing these issues. It's, and it's gonna be, whenever there's something on the previous history, you're gonna go look back. What you do is that you click on this history, uh, and, and you see, this, this is an, an important one. So you see what I did? I, I click on the history here. It used to set 10 commits, right? When, when I, in a, in a, a few seconds ago, it said 10 commits. Now it says nine commits. Why? Because I'm looking at the history from the perspective that that number there is telling me that I'm standing in the, in the, in the, in the past. So if I wanna stand in the present, I need to be in the master or the main branch. So then are the 10 commits. And if you forget that, like how do I get to that master? Just always click on the, on the repository and it will take, take, take you back to the, to the master version, okay? So, and then you go click on the, the history. You find, this is where all these messages that you left, all these little thingies, you're gonna see, ah, maybe this is, the, this is the message that I wanted to check. So you go here. A, you have the documentation in that short message, but B, you have the diff the differences between the, 
the, the, the, the latest commit and, the, and the, the one that you're looking at. So this is what you have. And then you go to browse files, download the whole thing, and, and pick whatever you wanted to, whatever you accidentally delete or whatever you thought was best. And you bring it to your to your yeah uh, to your computer okay um uh, so that's uh, we're not going to be able to go to um i'll share these slides for you to with you will have some links and some some documentation i created that might be helpful but then um, the last thing i wanted to leave you with is that and this is this is a a, a serious strategy is that sometimes you will have collaborations or you or you will have a, a merge conflicts that are going to be unavoidable that you're going to run into trouble you're going to say like i have no idea what i'm doing here terrified i'm, I'm it, impossible to, to fix so what are you going to do that in that case you're going to burn the whole thing down and you're going to start from scratch and what do i mean by that you're gonna you're gonna um uh, basically remember the the latest the, the 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 most accurate version of your work is always going to be on the server so the worst thing that can that can happen is that you're going to lose what happened between your last commit to a server and what's going on in your in your computer so you're going to go to your to your local repository here i'm going to be that that's my repository and i'm going to bring the whole thing down delete it and then i go to github and it says you delete the whole thing I'm just going to say clone it again. And basically what happens is that it brought the, the latest version from, from, from the cloud. And forget about all the headaches of resolving all the merge conflicts and things like that. If you still want to keep what was here and, and address the conflict, what one thing you can do is still delete it, you rename it. Once you rename it, it, it appears as deleted. So, so if I go here, if I just rename this thing, it's gonna it's gonna disappear, but effectively I have I still have a copy on my computer. I clone it again, and now I'm gonna have that's that's the version that's the so like the old copy that I'm gonna look for whatever I want it, uh, and this is the the new copy that's gonna have the 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 most current version of everything. So uh, yeah, that's basically the last thing I wanted to leave you with. And yep. Uh, Happy to chat after, but we're at time. Thank you.